Uh, yes, we have a brand new panel. We've also got from Germany, the wonderful Georgia. Good evening. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be back. Right, guys, we are diving straight in. We had some absolutely cracking songs there. Nick, best of the rest, what did you think? As, to me, it was a really, really great show. I was there live in the studio uh, last year. Honestly, the, the, the thing I could say, the, 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 the two weakest songs this year could have won last year. That's, that's how good I thought it was. For me, the favorites were um, Max, Mutske and Rick. Prior to this contest, everyone's favorite. I saw every everywhere I went, uh, I saw Rick's name uh, top on the bill, uh, top on everyone's list. So I was fairly fairly surprised that he got this low of um, votes from the international jury. I didn't quite get that. I thought his his his, his staging was great. His song was his his song was beautiful, and his, his voice was up par. So. I didn't quite get that. And Max Mutzke, is, it, it, that was just an amazing song, an amazing voice, an amazing performance. But I'm biased. I'm a big Max Mutzke fan. So, yeah. And, uh, that, well, Boudin Modet, as a Dutchman, I have to, 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 to bring her in the spotlight. She had a few appearances on Dutch television prior to the uh, national final in Germany, where she sung a lot better than she did that night and i i do think it's the it was the nerves because she could do so much better and i think that eventually killed all her chances of uh, of winning this thing yeah matt smutska adding to the list the grim reapers list of eurovision uh past contestants who haven't quite made it through this year um obviously uh we had the roop uh we've had margaret berger we've had kano We've added them to the list. Seasoned professionals. Anyway, I was supposed to say, and speaking of a seasoned professional, Sean, what did you make of uh, what was going on in Germany? Smooth link, Tom. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> what, a, a deluge as well? Um, you know, <laughs> my, one of my personal favourites were, were Gallant and Cat Z. <laughs> I mean, I'll have a pint of what they've been on. <laughs> that was brilliant. Uh, I can kind of just, love it. Can we just ask you, you know, because I don't think I asked you the same question last week when we had oh. yet another cat-themed song. Yeah. What yeah. the hell is going on? Is it a saucer of milk for Europe? I know. Can you imagine if they'd have both made it through and, like, two cat songs back after back? Oh, that would be the best fight. dog songs next year, please. So any <laughs> songwriters out there, dog songs, that's what I want next year. But I loved Cat C. It was kind of, like... Moody electronic alternative pop. Uh, I just thought it was completely off the wall compared to all the rest of the of the songs in this lineup. Uh, I love the staging and the camera work at the split scenes and stuff. I just really liked. I just really liked it, and I had a bit of fun. What else did I like? What else? Did I like? Oh, Rick and Old oh Boy. I mean, he finished third, didn't he? I've got to say, I prefer the studio version of the song rather than the performance. I think that's a lot stronger. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, I think it's the most interesting song in that selection. 
Uh, but I wasn't a, a massive fan of the live performance. But the song itself is, is really decent. Um, it's great to see everyone in the chat room commenting as well. Phil says it's brilliant to see Georgia again. And I don't think he's talking about the country. I think he's talking about you, Georgia. Also, uh, Little John UK says there were five songs I liked over the winner. Dan says, I personally thought that this was the strongest national final for Germany. Um, and ESC Manga says, Bedeen Monet, Mary Brian, and gives a little heart. Yes, I have to say, I, I loved seeing uh, Mary Ryan and the fact that she had the dress very similar uh, to what her mum wore when she represented Germany in Eurovision um, as well was great. Um, and he also said, I just love Leona's song, Undream You. I've heard this song quite a lot of times and every time I play it, I cry at buckets. That is the key to a brilliant song. Um, and little John does agree. Um, and Mick just chiming in there. What has Europe got against cat songs? Over the years, they have been the most memorable. Let's go to Georgia. Georgia, you must be a happy bunny. This was a cracking national final that Germany put on Friday night, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you know me, I always have something negative about the German selection to say. But this year, the only thing that's really sad, actually, is how little publicity there was for this show. I completely forgot about it because it's been mentioned absolutely nowhere. So, and the timing was, you know, it, it was way too late. I mean, this was a show that should have been on prime time. No, I really enjoyed it. Uh, really, and this is also very unusual for me because I don't usually like songs that are sung in German, but both Katze and Naive, I think, were great. And in my opinion, they should have been, you know, first and second place because Katze was the only song that made me stop and actually look at the performance because it was so different. And then Naive, you know, it was so traditional German, I guess. And I think Schlager obviously has a really big fandom in the ESC community. So it's a shame that they kind of went below the radar a bit. I think they could have done. Yeah, I, I imagined them to do a lot better, but nonetheless, I am very happy indeed. Yeah. Was it lovely to see Michelle again? Uh, obviously, yeah. Mary Rhymes' uh, mum. Yeah, that was a really nice touch. And also with the dress, I immediately noticed it. And I thought that's, you know, a really sweet way for her to honor her mom. And also in the like postcard beforehand, she said like, oh, how she spent her first birthday at that Eurovision and how special it is for her. So, you know, it would have been fun for her to go to Eurovision, bring her mom along maybe. But, oh, well, I'm sure she'll try, try again. Do you know what? I'm so pleased you said that because I did actually wonder what was going on. All I took from that is that she was a baby at Eurovision <laughs> in 2001. <laughs> Obviously, I don't speak German very well. No, no, she was talking a lot about um, the connection with her mom and how, you know, it's been a part of her life ever since. Could be. Do you think she'll be back? I hope so, yeah. I think Germany needs to send a good German song and what better than Schlager? This is true. I mean, it was one of the songs that I had definitely favourited on uh, Friday night. Uh, let's move across to Brendan. He's looking far too comfortable there. The overall competition was better. A massive step up on last year. So at least they're, they're going in the right direction. Hopefully they'll follow the UK in doing things better. Uh, Leona. Um, so uh, as everyone's probably starting to learn, I love a cliche love song and uh, <laughs> lovely voice, uh, sweet, uh, good uh, doing country touches, maybe vibes there as well, which was, was quite interesting to see because that's a cross board now with many of the national finals. So yeah, I absolutely love that song. Yes, I would love that one to win. Ah, amazing. Thanks, Brendan. And Alina, cracking selection of songs there. Um, mm -hmm. What was your take? Oh, um... For once, I really liked 99. <laughs> so it was like a cozy vibe. I enjoyed it. Um, the cat song, like, I was like, really, what's up with the cat songs? Like you said before, I was like, is this the team I don't know of? Or what am I missing? Um, also, really liked Florian um, and Rick. And I really, really loved um, Naive, Marie Reim. I, I thought it gave me some um, Helena Fisher. Uh, vibes and um, I thought if she maybe had done it more like Helena Fisher she would have done better I think I don't know but I really really loved that song also I really liked uh, Max Mutzke so for me it was a great final with a lovely great selection of songs so I really really enjoyed it 
Love on a budget. Amazing, handsome vibes. Thought it was great. Saddest shock of the evening was Florian literally getting one point from every single international jury. How this song propped up the scoreboard at the end of the night, I actually felt really, really sad for him. I thought he could have done so much better. I actually loved the song. Absolutely loved Mary Rhyme. Of course I would. Let's face it, I'm a campus Christmas half the time. So this was absolutely right up my street. And Max Mertzger, he knows how to deliver a song. Um, he was absolutely um, on the money and brilliant. But I have to say, by the time he'd performed, I'd already um, picked my winning act anyway. And speaking of winning acts, see, trying to build in these smooth links. Let's look at the song that actually won in Germany. This is Isaac and Always on the Run. I am nothing but the average Even though I'm special to some I can break out when I'm free Lost in my own Mit 74 Punkten. Damit gewinnt Isaac mit zwei Punkten. Congrats! <lacht> I always love those winning montages uh, that we see. Uh, big thanks to Sean for putting them together. And do you know what, Sean? Let's thrust you into the spotlight straight away. What are we <laughs> thinking to Germany's chances now? Well, well done, Germany. I don't think you're, you know, you're not going to be the bottom place this year. That is a really strong song. One of the, I think, yeah, one of the strongest songs I think maybe this year so far. Uh, will the jury vote? Will the public vote? So no one can really argue the fact that he's won. It's good. It stands out a mile in this selection. It really does. Uh, I just think they might need to work on the staging a little bit. I just want them to elevate it to the next level. Oh, maybe something like, talking about elevation, something like Caesar Samson. Let's get him up on a platform. Let's make it more dynamic and more exciting. And, and do you know what I mean? I think they can really work at that on this time yet before before they get some Alma. But uh, I think Germany could have a really good result this year. Yeah, good on them. Well done, Germany. Elena. So I really, really like this one. I'm a bit, bit uh, shown on this one also, like the staging. Like I'm a bit afraid that it feels, that it's going to feel like really empty on a big stage at as Eurovision. Um, so maybe they have to work on that. I really, really like it. I hope it will not be bottom place. And I also like the blue lights and the purple background. So I think Germany has a great shot with this one. Let's move on to Brendan. Yeah, I, I think it was the most professional of the evening. It was a great song, fantastic voice. I'd like to hope he does well. Nick, what are we thinking? This guy, actually, Isaac has a really, really great voice. To be honest, I really, really dig the song. Guys, let's just look at some of the comments before we go to Georgia. And Georgia, I have deliberately left you till till last as, as our German representative on the panel uh, this evening. Obviously, Michelle was very much kind of like, I agree about Florian, absolutely gutted. Um, but uh, Anya, Isaac is a really great singer and it's a great song. Uh, ESC Manga, best performance of the night. Isaac can save Germany from last place. Anita, Isaac was a deserved winner. What a voice and song. He knew how to perform and he seems like a likeable guy. And now the song is stuck in my head again. Little John says, what's he running from? Must admit, quite nonplussed by it. Guys, within 20 seconds of hearing this song on Friday night, literally, I was like a winner. I was that smug person that actually took a photograph of the conversation I was in to prove the fact that I actually had this pegged as the winner from the word go. And there's a few reasons why. I absolutely loved this song. First of all, there's no intro. He goes boom, straight in with the song. It's got a really strong hook from the word go. 
It's modern, it's contemporary. It reminds me a little bit of the music from Rag and Bone Man. I think the lyrics have got some brilliant meaning behind them. And I actually thought the staging um, with kind of like shapes and stuff going on behind him was absolutely brilliant. I genuinely think this is the best song that Germany have sent probably since Michael Schulter um, uh, about six years ago. I think it's got a terrific chance to do really well with the juries and stuff in Malmö. And I really look forward to see how Germany get on this year and I'm really hoping Georgia is as positive about it um as I am over to you oh why do you do this to me um no I'm actually really glad he won because the song is really good and he seems so nice um and actually during the show uh, Lord of the Lost came and they talked about they being did they come last second to last bottom five anyway and they said you know it didn't matter they gained so many new friends and obviously new fans and they do it all over again even if they knew they'd be guaranteed last place and I really hope he like talks to them and really gets that vibe because I don't know I don't think it's a bottom five song but you know being German <laughs> it's just easier to accept we'll be bottom five and then if we end up being somewhere on the left side of the board amazing best night ever but if not I'm sure he'll have a great time. And I mean, the song's going to be played on the radio here every day. Yeah, overall, I'm, I'm really happy with the selection. And I really hope we're going to get some points. Um, staging wise, I do agree. I think he seemed a bit awkward at times. But as far as I know, he doesn't have that much uh, experience with performances because he's been mostly doing you know his thing on the streets so obviously standing in front of that many people and cameras it must have been a big shock to him so hopefully you know with a few pre-parties he'll get used to it and then I don't want them to change too much please no trumpets or any other musical items like they did with Mali Harris I thought that was so horrible <laughs> so I really hope they just polish it a bit and keep the the vibe of it and yeah maybe have him gain some confidence and then let's hope for you know another surprise like michael schulte because really no one here thought he'd do that well as well so yeah overall i'm happy hey thumbs up if we think germany are going to be on the left hand side of the scoreboard this year well, do you know what? I like to think the fact that the majority of us are positive about it. But that is Germany done and dusted. Melfest is approaching. Yes, it was Melfest last night. Semi-final three. Some songs made it. And quite frankly, some songs didn't. Another cracking selection of songs there. Nick, away you go. What did we think? We think it was uh, it was really, really good. Excellent. There were like four songs which deserved final for me. Clara Klingenstorm, I didn't get the, the fifth place. She really deserved uh, at least um, another chance. And Kim Cesarian, I, that was actually uh, one of my top favorites uh, for this evening that was my number two so i really really didn't get that last place but maybe someone else could explain it to me i don't know interesting do you know what if anyone's ever going to explain that to you it's going to be this guy here yeah sean, sean tell me. can you explain it i was really comments so about listening <laughs> oh what's, sure what, what's your question sorry pal well, I'm going to go now. Uh, well, my question to you was, wh why do you think Kim Cesare Cesarian was last place? Because to me, it was like top two. Yeah, uh, I really, really liked it as well. I really liked it. Uh, it. I just, I don't know, the intro sounded like a speeded up 
version intro from Occidentis, Occidentalist Karma, or the rest of it sounded like a, a Liam a Liamu crossover match with Marcus and Martinez. It was it was just I don't know. It's really you know really good dancey pop record. I really really liked it and the performance as well. He put a lot into that performance. He really really did. Uh, I liked it. I, I was disappointed. Uh, that he, he, you know, that he finished what did he? I think he finished last place, did he? Last place, I mean, yes. I mean, yeah. yeah, what a shame. I'm gutted at that. Uh, I'd certainly swap him out from <laughs> from one of the others who uh, have, are in the final qualification round for sure. Uh, Clara Klingstrom, I was, I was a bit disappointed. I'm afraid. I really like her, her previous entry from 2021. Uh, what with, with, with the massive microphone? It was huge. It was nearly as big as her head. That microphone crazy but yeah i was i was disappointed in her song last night uh but uh, you know as far as you know the others are concerned cloudy my my ian this was his favorite song of the night actually to be honest uh, i could see why it's qualified you know for the final round um i think it's still part of anna bergenau's ashes to ashes set <laughs> about a fifth of it i think but you know it was a nice love song Gunnelia a person i mean I'm sorry, I didn't like it at all. I just thought it was a really basic, bland song. And, you know, she's a, quite a big celebrity over in Sweden. I, I, you know, from what I can gather, she used to be a model. And uh, now she's a TV presenter. She even had a little tiny part in, in Dallas, because she used to live in Dallas. And she had a little part in, in you know, the, the Smash US Soap Dallas at one point. I, I mean, I think the, the top two of the night are the right ones to go through. And we'll get onto that in a moment. But it was a really, really good semi final. Uh, it's shaped up to be an exciting final. Can't wait. Georgia, uh, obviously four songs last night. What did we think? Did the right two get the uh, second chance tickets? Oh, absolutely, in my opinion. I mean, I personally thought every song was very good. I think they all could have, you know, advanced. So good. I think for me, the only issue is there wasn't one song that really stood out. So it's hard for me to say, you know anything specific because they in my mind they were all great but none had that factor where i was like oh this is great and i'm gonna you know play it for the next couple of weeks i will say uh clara Klingstrom, probably if i had to pick would be my favorite of the night and i was sad for her with sweden being you know host country it would have been so amazing to see her in that big arena and just sing in swedish and have everyone join in even if maybe she wouldn't have placed very high on the scoreboard but it would have been a really just nice song to have i think there was a place for all of them let's go to brendan uh it was a very good show um i can only imagine what the final is going to be like very very strong uh in different singers different genres it was very brilliant i think i agree with georgia that there was no standout um during, they all kind of get lost with each other so i didn't mind generally who went through um i think the only person i i did was drawn to then more than the others was Clara her Clara I love the voice uh, sweet song great beat but you got your foot tapping you just seemed to have something to it um and it built so well um obviously she didn't get it didn't get anything out of it unfortunately Neil reckons we're going to be looking to semi four or five for the eventual winner RJ loved Kazia Pia uh ESC manga is Clara Klingenstrom NQ question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark um and I think I agree with you. Uh, Michelle reckons Sean's wrong and has no idea what he's on about. But I'll let you have that domestic uh, on your own own time. Uh, Mick reckons that Ganila person looked like someone's granny had a chemical stimulant added to her GMT. But the cowboy dancers were easy on the eye. I feel sorry for um, Clara Killingenstrom. It just didn't work out for her. And I thought that was a great shame um, because I did love the song. Although, as always, the kiss of death when I watch this. I actually had um, the song that came rock bottom uh, to go through, which was Kim Cesarian, Take My Breath Away. I thought that was an awesome track. That is being added to my playlist. Sorry, that's it. It's going on there. If you're travelling on the car journey with me, tough luck. Um, Alina, what would you reckon? First of all, I would love to be in a car with you. Your music taste is quite, I think, sometimes similar than mine. I loved Clara Klingström. I love the curtains uh, behind her. I do think it got a bit boring near the end, like you would expect something to happen and it just stays a bit flat. Kim Cesarian, take my breath away. Like, 
that's a song you want to hear again and again and again. I love the dancing. And I also lo loved uh, Cloudy for Day. I definitely want to, again, hear it again. And Kanina Person, it was a party, uh, but not for my generation, I think. I mean, uh, I think my grand would love it, but uh, not for me. Yeah, do you know what? Not for my generation either, to be fair, Alina. I think we're going uh, fur fur further up further up the generations. Oh, oh, Sean, sorry, oh, there you are. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> you cheeky really... cow. <laughs> I really couldn't resist, I'm that's, sorry. That's payback for calling me tired. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, guys, let's look at who actually made it direct to final in Melfest last night. Two effortless songs that would surely give your heart a break from breaking uh, with their fantastic uh, moves, as it were. Yes, I know it's cheesy. Brendan, two songs there. What are we thinking? Have we seen the winner of Melfest 2024 yet? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, Jacqueline's good voice, very clear cut. It was effortless for her, to be fair. She's a very good singer. Um, but wasn't my cup of tea at all. Kazi, um, WTF was in my initial comments. <laughs> uh, it was a bit mad, but uh, by the end, it is very catchy. And uh, when it was back on there a moment ago, I've had the right hate to like it. it it's it's a bit like uh, the catchiness of Uno and things like that. You don't want to like it, but you go into. Let's go back to Alina. Yeah. Alina, what did you think of these? Also, as as someone who I think is is very into into fashion as well, let's 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 also think about Kazzy's outfit as well because I thought that was fabulous. No comment. <laughs> it's, oh. just, oh, it, it's not my thing. Like with Cassiopeia last time, also I I, I didn't really liked it. Uh, not the outfit, not the song, not not, not the whole package. No hate to the artist itself, but uh, she just doesn't fit my name and I hoped this year she would and I still don't like it sorry then the other one with effortless uh, that's an outfit I would uh, I would I would wear I also think that the song is done like well um the staging is done really great it's not a song you would like put on repeat for days straight and I'm the type of person who puts songs on repeats for days straight so maybe you don't want to be in my car um, and that isn't a song I would do that with. So do you know what, Alina? At some point, me and you road trip. Yeah, I think it'd be brilliant, amazing. Good. We'll take carpool karaoke to a brand new level. Yes, ah, oh, that would be great. Yes, if I show. I think we are hitting upon a fabulous idea. Thanks for coming. Lucky. I'm coming. I'm Obviously. coming. <laughs> I was going to say that Sean's lucky. I'll, we'll bring him along for the ride. I'm hiding in the boot if, you, if there's no room in the seat. Sean could be the chauffeur. He's oh, gone but quiet. that means I can't drink. <laughs> <laughs> we'll share it. We'll share. We'll share the driving. I'll drive. That means I can turn off the songs. I'm in charge of it. <laughs> oh, no, no. I think this is going. I think this is going all wrong. Nick, can you drive? <laughs> 
I actually don't. I don't have a driver's license, but if you stay in the UK with your driving, then I will be safe in the rest of the continent too. So that will be great. Thank you. <laughs> oh, come on. I have a feeling you had an effortless time uh, with the I know, the and I'm a bit sour that, you know, Elena doesn't feel the same way because to me, I really thought Jacqueline was even better than Louine last year. I really think we have a winner here. And not not only Melody Festival, but they could in this again bonkers year. This was so smooth, so classy, so effortless. It was like she didn't. She just got out of her dressing room, put on a show, went back home, you know, and started cooking for Abby. It was like it, it was so. I I really dug it. It was amazing. I really think this could win Eurovision. There, I've said it. I love it. I love your optimism there. Um, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Georgia, what are we thinking? I'm, I'm a bit torn. I mean, Cassiopeia is fun, as always. You know, it's a song. I love to watch her. Then I maybe put her in a couple of my playlists and then skip her after a while because it gets a bit... I don't even know how to describe it, but I am happy she's um, won two to the next show. And then... Jacqueline, to me, this is too clean and pop song. I don't know. It's a good song. It could stand out alone with the staging, but it doesn't have anything special that screams winner to me. So, yeah, I don't I don't think she's going to win Melfast and definitely not Eurovision. Um, just before we go to Sean. Uh, let's look at some of the comments in the chat room. Sean's not old. He's just well worn in. Oh, that's from Michelle. Um, it's going to be great when uh, you two get together. Is, is that a compliment uh, or an insult? I'm still trying to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Little John UK, effortless is not on my scene, uh, but says now Kazi Opea. Yes. Neil says there were obvious qualifiers for me. Um, I don't think either will be the eventual winner. ESC Manga, Jacqueline, Effortless, amazing song and best staging. Mick reckons, I think I must have had the same chemical stimulants as Kazi OP as designer. Uh, Neil says, those of us that play the Thomas Jeeson drinking game put back to you last night. Uh, Dan reckons Jacqueline or Maria Serta so far to win Melody Festival, and in my opinion. Uh, looking forward to what's in store in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Michelle Harrison, Kazi OP, definitely deserve to go through. Elliot Harris, Kazi was the best last night. Um, but yet to hear a winner of Melfest yet. And RJ, I wouldn't be surprised if Sweden won again, to be honest. I loved both of the songs that went through. I thought they were brilliant. I suppose my random fact is, and it's been bugging me since I heard it, uh, Casio Pia's song, um, brilliant. And it's got a hook, and I'm thinking, where does it come from? Where does it come from? And it's because she's using a really famous chord sequence. And yes, this is where I digress into music theory but um Pash Bell's canon in D D basically apply it to her song it works it's fine she's got that hook absolutely embedded in there um, and it's one of the reasons why you are going to find it so catchy and it's one of the reasons why she deserved to go through direct final last night and she picked up so many 12s along the way as well um, someone who I know is going to be as enthusiastic about this as me, it's ESC Fan TV seasoned professional. It's Sean. Oh, you're making me sound really old. Well, I'm going to start with Cassiopeia. Okay, give my heart a break. What uh, that is just so much fun. What a big party pop banger. Uh, I, I bet that as soon as the dancers, the backing dancers, were shown their outfits, what they were going to be wearing <laughs> during the performances, I bet they thought, oh my God. <laughs> I'd have loved to see the faces. I still prefer a previous one. I can't get enough. But this is equally as catchy. It was always going to go through, sailing through to the final. And she had a great night, didn't she? Let's face it, because she co wrote effortless as well so yeah hats off to, to Cassio Pay. she's had a great time at the moment let's get on now to Jacqueline and effortless oh my god sorry I just had to do that because I mean this song fits her voice perfectly 
uh, from the moment it starts off with the thumping bass beat. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, it just gets you. And it's so dramatic when she's being lowered down in the frame and the lights. The staging that I've seen is by far the way the best stage I've seen in Melfest this year. It is fantastic. The song's my favourite so far this year in Melfest. I agree this could possibly win it and possibly win Eurovision, although it's too early to say we've only got half the songs-ish. <sighs> There's just one little niggly thing about it that just annoys me a little bit, and I'm going to have to tell you about it. The song's called Effortless, and I think it's kind of ironic because her performance doesn't really have any effort at all. The song's amazing. The stage is amazing. You've got all this fantastic production going on around her, and a vocal is nailed. Nothing wrong with that. But physically, it looks like she can't be bothered. <laughs> you know, the song's called Effortless. Is she not putting much effort into it? Does she, is, that, is that the point of it? I don't know. She, it just looks like she's going through the motions. Do you know what I mean? And all that's going on around her, I think. But it is spectacular. It is amazing. And I had to watch it again and again and again. But it's just a physical part of her performance. Just annoys me a little bit. Does, does anyone understand where I'm coming from there? Oh, I would like to respond on that because I thought oh. that was just, I thought that was just the thing that stood it out, you know, that, that she really was like, she was there. Just, you know, she had, it, she was in full control. Like a, like a Mila of the Army of Lovers. She would, she, she, well done, told other, other different oh. reference, but she, she stood there. She, she owned the place. Like, I thought that was the cool thing about it. Cool. I mean, perhaps that's a thing, maybe. I don't know. It was just something that I'm thinking. I just wanted to give her, I just wanted to give her a little bit more. But then again, if she did, would her vocal have suffered? Maybe. I don't know. But I mean, you, you know, it's far and away the best song I've heard in Melfest this year. I love it. 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 We have, as a, as a quick poll, guys, um, who reckons we've actually seen the winner of Melfest so far? Thumbs up. Oh, guys in the chat room, thank you again so much for your conversation and getting involved. We always love to hear from you. Uh, Little John is looking forward to Martin and Martinus. Uh, Neil says, I sometimes watch songs from smaller countries' finals and think, what would the SVT designers and directors done with this and how much better would we think it was? Anita says, thank you for great shows today. Yes, three hours of ESC fan TV. Thank you again for tuning in. We are back next week. Continue the conversation online. We love hearing from each and every one of you. And we will see you next week. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.